Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. Uh, today marks my, I guess, one month anniversary of, of being on the road on this journey. Uh, hard to believe it's it's been a month. Uh, I feel like I've done a lot in the last month, uh, which is good. Um, but it's just hard to believe that a, a month has gone by seemingly now so quickly. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty overcast. It's chilly. Uh, it's in the 50s. I have no uh, technology. There's no cell service here. I don't know if it's supposed to rain. I The last time I checked, there was no rain in the forecast. But as you can see, it um, looks like it's a possibility at this point. Uh, today I'm riding from the Magpie Campground to the Missouri Little Missouri River Crossing and back. Um, there's no bridge from here to, I don't know, 50 miles in either direction. Uh, so you either ford the river or you do it as an out and back and drive around, which is, <laughs> is my plan. Uh, I don't know what the river looks like. I don't know how deep it is or how wide, but... Um, not really looking to go for a swim today and the trail picks up on the other side anyway and the, the next campground elkhorn campground is on the other side of the river anyway so i have to drive around anyway uh believe it or not it's like that campground is probably 25 miles from here and it looks like it's going to be about a maybe over two hours to drive it so i i'll either come back and camp here tonight and do that in the morning or depending on what time I get back this afternoon just try to knock it out this afternoon we'll see so I hope the weather holds and uh, once again very peaceful very quiet right there was one bike bike packer here last night from Germany interesting guy Manfred um, and he's a Fran, a fan of the Tour de France, the Giro Italia, and all that, and he wanted to talk about it, and uh, which is good. We had something in common. Um, so once again, at, at this point, uh, he's gone, and I'm here all by myself in the middle of nowhere, North Dakota, again, which is which is okay. But it's, it's time to go for a ride, so let's do it. These cottonwood trees look amazing. So pretty. Gotten to a, ridden about five miles from the Magpie Campground, and I've come to a spot called Devil's Pass, which is on all the maps. It's a, uh, I guess, one of the most prominent geologic features or trail features here on the Mata Hay. But so, I don't know how deep that is. Looks like it could be pretty deep. Probably not something you want to fall off of. Wish me luck.
I've made it to my turnaround point. This is the Little Missouri River. Uh, the trail continues on the other side. Uh, tomorrow, I'll I'll come up from over there somewhere to this point and turn around and go back the other way. But it's um, serene is really the word, I guess. There's no wind. There's no car noise. There's no jet noise. There's no uh, there's no critter sounds. The only sound is some idiot babbling into a GoPro in the middle of nowhere, North Dakota, again. I do like to find myself in the middle of nowhere, though. This is a place that I'm sure very few of my followers have been, and I... I am personally aware of one, two people that have been here before, and that is it. Beautiful. So just walking along the riverbank, there's all these different colors of rocks and shapes this one looks like bone the sedimentary rock here this one's really cool looking almost like petrified wood but Sandstone, maybe. This looks like quartz. It's definitely some sort of sandstone. These are really unique. Know what you're saying? It's not true. He's not on the grass. He's just tripping out naturally. All right. It's time to find my bicycle. Turn around, head back. About, uh, I think it was 13 miles here. And it was like 15, 1600 feet of climbing, so. Got that to look forward to. At, I'm not sure how many, not very many points along this trail they have water caches, which is nice. So, water only. Mark your water bottles with your name and date. Some donated water may be in the cache. Only take as much as you need. It's basically a bear box. And as you can see, there's water. Maybe some, uh, maybe some food, I don't know. Nice. And the cache is a unique one of, one of the Made of Hay Trail signs, but the cache has a little, little water droplet in it. Isn't that cute? And a view. Water, cute turtle sign, view.
I made it back to Camp Magpie. It's 20, 24 and a half miles, about 2,800 feet of climbing today. Went out to the Little Missouri River. Beautiful. I've come back to this campsite and uh, there's, once again, there's not a soul here except for me. And it's, the weather has improved and it's super quiet. I was going to drive this afternoon the two hours to the next campsite. <clears throat> um, but I, I can't imagine that the next campsite is, can be possibly any better than this. And, uh, it's just so peaceful and, uh, I just decided to stay here tonight and then get up in the morning and, and make that drive and then do tomorrow's ride. So, um, yeah, that's it for tonight. Um, got a few things to do. A little bit, a little bit of bike maintenance again. Gonna make some dinner, and uh, I have some time. I, I might even make a campfire. I I usually don't, um, but I have a little bit of time tonight, and uh, I have some wood. And why not, right? Camping when in Rome. So. That's my plan. I should I'm kind of looking forward to enjoying a, a little bit of a relaxing evening. I, <laughs> I know it probably doesn't seem like it to, to you guys, but my pace is, is, is exhausting and um, I don't really have much downtime. So I am looking forward to just a little bit of downtime tonight, but you know making fires and making dinner and showering and bike maintenance and um, video editing it's it all takes time and um it's just kind of go 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 so i say right now i'm gonna have some downtime we'll actually see if that happens but it's gonna be a very pleasant evening i hope it clears up i hope the stars come out tonight and and it remains as, as quiet and, and peaceful as it is right now. See what's over this horizon. Man, brutal day. Steep ups and downs. Oh, look. Looks like I get some flat miles. Or maybe a flat mile or a flat half mile. Whatever, I'll take it. gates get really old uh, but these people are letting us ride across their private land and there's some state lands here and then there's a it's an oil field I call it oil you might call it oil whatever it's an oil field
as you can see, I've made it back to the Little Missouri River. Yesterday I was standing over there playing with rocks. Um, guess I better at least go back, go down to it. Just to say I did. Gotta say, I did the whole trail. The part that's underwater doesn't count. Ooh. A little, a little muddy and gunky. I think I'm gonna pass going through that. So, this is my turnaround point for the day. Nine miles, a little over a thousand feet of climbing. Turn around and head back. Maybe we have a little snack first. Snacky snack. Steep climbs today, lots of them. Today's ride is finished. 18 miles. A um, couple thousand feet of climbing, I'd say. So, on paper, didn't seem like a, certainly wasn't the biggest ride, but um, steep ups and downs for sure. And shower time. Didn't really. Didn't get as warm as I had hoped. We're kind of in a row here, and uh, I would say there's, uh, let's see, maybe 10, and three, there's one of those bulls down there, three of them are occupied, um, but they're kind of tucked away in the trees a little bit, and it's, uh, I guess, an, an embankment, which is kind of nice, but uh, looks to be an okay evening here at the Elkhorn. By far the most remote of the campsites um, on this trail. Good morning everyone, today is Friday, October 9th, 2020. Uh, today is uh, day, we would stay seven on the trail. I'll be going from here, uh, Elkhorn Campground, to halfway from here to the Wanagan Campground and back today. Um, so far it's turning out to be quite a nice day. There's no wind, it's blue skies. Should be a nice day. 
the cows <laughs> the cows didn't come into the site last night which I thought that they would um, the cattle guards not keeping them out and they're a problem because they're enormous and they're they're being destructive. They're breaking signs and signposts. They're scratching themselves, and um, and not only that, but they're pooping <laughs> nonstop. So I don't know if I'm going to stay here tonight. Uh, after I finish my ride, I'll decide whether I'm going to just pack up and go down. Um, and start down there tomorrow or stay here tonight and then pack up in the morning and go start down there tomorrow so I'll make that designation uh, or that decision uh, probably when I finish my ride today unless something happens before that so anyway it should be it should be a nice day and another uh, another really nice ride looking forward to it okay. 20 miler today um, hope it's not too terribly difficult um to be honest with you i'm getting a, a little bit fatigued so let's see how it goes beautiful little valley you can see the trail go up the gut over there it's gonna wander around it's like i get to climb out the other side get into these ruts and they're tricky because if you get caught in there and start banging off the sides you're gonna wreck some of them are so deep that you have pedal strikes on both sides that's a problem too Like an endo. <clears throat> no. Cows, man. I know this land is great for cows, but geez, they've just beat up the trail, beat up the campsites, beat up my bike. I cannot wait have a stake at the end of this thing. Get my cow revenge. Finding the further I go south, the easier the trail gets. There's still some steep up and downs, but not rapid fire one right after the other. And uh, here, I think I'm in an oil field, and I think there's less cow poop. I don't know. But the single track is pretty nice here, this section. Looking for Roosevelt Creek. I don't know if there's gonna be a sign or a picture of Roosevelt. Pretty sure it might be a creek. And that is my turnaround point for today. And according to the old Garmin, this should be about there. I've gone 11 miles, a little over 11 miles, and this is my turnaround point. And there actually is a Roosevelt Creek sign um not, it's not much to look at <laughs> something very arid out here my skin is just just flaking off <laughs> i 
I got a text today from a friend that was like, you should use moisturizer. Well, yeah, I do use moisturizer. Don't I look funky fresh? Dry. My voice this morning was hoarse, and I think it's because of how dry it is and just uh, I'm probably a little bit dehydrated as well. But I'm going to have a snack and turn around. Go back. Oh man, just finished today's ride. 20, a little over 22 miles and a little over 3,000 feet of climbing. But that is almost warm. I'm gonna have an almost warm shower tonight versus the cold showers I've had for the last seven nights. A little chilly breeze though. You're out here, water's warm, but you're out here in a chilly breeze, buck naked. Warm water's nice. It's gonna feel good. Right now I'm gonna have me an ice cold Coca-Cola. Seems a bit. See? Wasn't kidding. Mmm. Mmm. Coke and a smile. So at all these campsites, um, self-pay, and the fee for camping here is ten bucks. Sometimes it's fifteen, sometimes a little more. But the key, it's it's ten dollars per night per campsite, but if you have a um, national parks pass or what they call an interagency pass or an all access pass which I do it's half off so five bucks obviously here um, but this pass is paid for itself in a, in a month I visited two national parks which those are usually like 35 and up to get into um, and then I've you know I don't know probably at least at least 30 nights well I can't say that maybe 25 nights at a campground the other nights have been boondocking in the middle of nowhere and then I've spent a few nights in a hotel but the bottom line is, is you know it's paid for itself and it's it's such a great deal. I mean, what do you get for five bucks? You get a table, usually a level-ish site, uh, usually secluded. You get a pit toilet, and it's probably a, a, I have been getting water. Uh, there's a well at a lot of these, um, hand pump well, and um, a kiosk with a map and some info on it. But yeah, five bucks. What a what a bargain. Get your pass. It's worth it. morning everybody it is Saturday the 10th of October 2020 
And last night I stayed here at the Elkhorn campground again. It's an interesting thing that's going on here. Every, they're, all the campsites are full. There's only two people that actually spent the night here. People come and they set up their rigs and uh, you know their campers, tents, whatnot, and split. And I, I think they're hunting. So they're just kind of using this as a staging area, but you know, they've been gone for like days. I'm like, I don't know why you would bother doing it the way they're doing it, but I'm sure there's they have their their reasons. Um, but anyway, uh, it's full. The campground is completely full and of vehicles <laughs> and nobody's here. But why I'm saying that is because where I actually start today's ride, today's out and back starts about 20 miles from here at a different campground. Of course, my original plan was to, you know, pack up, go down there, and just camp there for the night and do my two out and backs from there. Well, it's going to be full. The campground's going to be full. It's even closer to town than this one. And so I think I'm just going to stay here again and just drive down there, do the ride, drive back, see what happens. Filling up my shout. Having a warm shower yesterday was nice. Kind of got to figure it out with the stick to hold it up there. So, yeah, that's my plan for today. Is to uh, get my gear, pack up, head down there, ride, and come back here. Oh, last night at about 2:30 in the morning, I feel my car shaking shaking back and forth and I'm like oh my gosh the wind has really come up then I realize it's it's you know and I'm kind of in a, a little bit of a stupor and it's uh rhythmic and I get up and I look out and I look out the windshield and there's a cow licking the front of the car and the car is surrounded by cows unbelievable so I flash my lights and you know they did the deer in the headlights thing like what are you doing so I opened the door of the car and yelled at them and they dispersed, but man, the, the cows are really disrupting the scene down here and not into it. They need to, they need to fix that cattle guard. So that's my story about last night. Today's going to go much better. It helps when you close the valve. Today's gonna go much better, much better. Auspicious start. That's what my skin looks like. <laughs> it is an absolute brutal day today. Uh, I'm on the section of trail. I'm going from Wanigan Trailhead to where I turned around yesterday at the Roosevelt Creek. It's a, it's a 20 mile day. Uh, I've come three miles over that. It's up and down, up and down. The wind is pretty much sustained 30 miles an hour uh, and it is never behind me. I guess theoretically on this entire ride it'll be behind me uh, maybe a fourth of the way at best. Uh, behind me is the Theodore Roosevelt National Park which is where this trail basically 
it doesn't terminate, but you can't ride your mountain bike in a national park. So for me, this is where the trail terminates is at this trailhead, the Wanigan Trailhead. So it's a little bit of a bittersweet day for me after so many days on this trail. Um, I guess I'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, this day is 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 throwing it at me. It's uh, it's gonna be the rest of the day is gonna be very difficult, and uh, <laughs> frankly, I'm just hoping to survive it. Found a little spot where I'm out of the wind. I can't believe it. Roosevelt Creek. I'm at the halfway point, day eight, I think. It's my turnaround point. I stood at the same point 24 hours, basically 24 hours ago. Came from that direction. And today I'm heading back that direction, Roosevelt Creek. Kind of a, I don't know, I feel a little melancholy. I mean, it's a, uh, I'm glad it's here and I'm and honestly, I'm glad it's almost over, but it, man, what an adventure this has been. And today is my, my last day on this trail and this is my last turnaround point. I still have uh, you know, a couple hours of riding, but um, I'm just sitting there eating my cliff bar, just kind of reminiscing on the last bunch of days on this trail and how I haven't seen not even one, not even one mountain biker on this entire trail uh, all these days. And it's an epic trail. It's a International Mountain Bike Association epic trail. And I have been the only mountain biker that I have seen actually on the trail. Um, but man, what, what a great trail. It's technical, it's flowy, it's scenic, it's remote, it's fast, it's slow, it's windy, it's cold, it's hot, it's extremely well marked. Um, it is, it's a mountain biking treasure and it's a, it's definitely a destination. Um, you're not going to come, you're not going to get here without making this your, your goal. But I promise you, if you do make this your goal, you will not be disappointed. It is an adventure. It is out there. Definitely need to be prepared though. It's harsh and strenuous and unforgiving, but that's why, that's why we do it, right? All right, let's turn around and head back. Wasn't fully sure what his intention were. Glad he decided to go the other way. So you can see the trail miles away up there at the top of those hills and it's it's beautiful and it's kind of inspiring but it's also daunting looking at that climb, another climb. It's just one after another. And my gosh, that wind. So I'm meaning to just stop here and there and show you this petrified wood that's laying around. It is really cool. I mean, to look at it, you would think that that's definitely just a piece of tree. But that is a rock. And it is solid. You, you see it around. And, uh, Really, really cool. I mean, I've been to the petrified forest and lots of other places with petrified wood, but apparently not this particular type of tree, whatever it was, but that's really cool. Petrified wood, things that make you go, hmm, while you're out here on the trail. Well, I did it, it's done. It's over. I have 
my celebratory Coke. Showing a map here. Started here, CCC campground, out and back to the park. Can't go through the park. Then from there, all the way down to here. Here's the park. Can't go through there either. So this is the end of the trail for mountain bikers. There is another trail that goes around called the Buffalo Gap Trail, but as far as the Mata Hay, this is basically where it ends. See the town of Medora. And uh, saw quite a bit. It's a long way to go out and back. Right here, first campground. I don't even know. Second campground, third campground, this last campground. A journey. I gotta say, I'm, I'm really glad it's behind me. <laughs> I'm exhausted. My butt's tired, my legs are tired, my shoulders hurt, my wrist is killing me. But man, was it fun. My bike, oh, look at it, destroyed. Mud, cow poop, just grit and grime, and, but it held up. No on-trail mechanicals. Fantastic. This is it for the trail. Kind of sad. I'm tired. We're gonna go back to camp. Maybe have another celebratory coke. The Mata Hay Trail by the numbers. I started at the CCC campground and ended at the Wanigan campground. The CCC campground being the north end, the Wanigan being the south end. It was eight out and back stages ranging between 15 and 30 miles per day. The entire length out and back was 20,377 feet of climbing and it was 175 miles total also out and back. As you can see by the ride profile, it has lots of ups and downs, and I would definitely do it again. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Next, I'll be heading eastward from here to check out some lesser known riding zones. If you want to follow along, please hit that subscribe button. And once again, thank you for watching.